Thora Afton Chamberlain, born on November 22, 1930, and presumed to have passed away around November 2, 1945, was a 14-year-old American high school student. On November 2, 1945, she was reported missing, and despite the conviction of Thomas Henry McMonagall for her murder, her remains were never located. After concluding her classes at Campbell High School in Campbell, California, Chamberlain was last observed outside the school. Accounts from her classmates reveal that she engaged in a conversation with a motorist on Winchester Boulevard. The individual, dressed in a U.S. Navy uniform adorned with military medals, informed Chamberlain that he was in search of a babysitter to care for his sister's children during the afternoon. Intrigued by the proposition, Chamberlain agreed to accompany the man and entered his vehicle. Thomas Henry McMonagall, a resident of San Mateo, California, immediately became the primary focus of law enforcement's investigation. McMonagall had a history of arrests dating back to his teenage years, including charges related to assault and attempted rape. Shortly after the incident, he left the area and relocated to his father's residence in Illinois. On December 6, while traveling on a bus to San Francisco, McMonagall attempted suicide by consuming a lethal dose of sleeping pills. However, prompt medical attention saved his life, and he made a full recovery. Following his release from the hospital, FBI agents, who were actively probing Chamberlain's disappearance, promptly arrested him. Despite never serving in the Navy, McMonagall admitted to discovering the uniform and medals in a stolen footlocker that belonged to a genuine serviceman. This footlocker was discovered in the garage of McMonagall's San Mateo home. However, his accounts regarding Chamberlain's demise and the whereabouts of her body were inconsistent and varied greatly. At different times, McMonagall claimed responsibility for her murder through shooting, stabbing, or strangling, as well as accidentally shooting her or witnessing her fatal fall from his vehicle. He even asserted his lack of involvement in her death altogether. During an examination of McMonagall's car, investigators uncovered a bullet hole on the inside of a door, lending support to the possibility that Chamberlain had been shot inside the vehicle. McMonagall stated that he had extracted the bullet from the door and buried it beneath a specific tree in his backyard. Additionally, he alleged removing and burying the car's stained padding and upholstery, tainted with Chamberlain's blood, in a drainage ditch near his workplace. Both locations were searched, leading to the successful recovery of the bullet and car parts still bearing traces of blood. Forensic analysis confirmed that the bullet had been discharged from McMonagall's .32 caliber Colt revolver. McMonagall also claimed that he disposed of Chamberlain's body by throwing it off a cliff known as the Devil's Slide, overlooking Half Moon Bay on the San Mateo County coast. A thorough search of the area uncovered two pairs of socks, red and blue, wedged in the cliff face, which were positively identified by Chamberlain's parents. While McMonagall's assertion regarding burying Chamberlain's clothing in his backyard could not be verified, a separate excavation carried out by the FBI at the construction site where McMonagall had been employed during the time of the disappearance yielded a pair of shoes, school books, papers, a zippered binder, and a cowbell that belonged to Chamberlain. According to the prosecution's theory, McMonagall allegedly abducted Chamberlain with the intent to commit sexual assault. It was speculated that he resorted to murder when she resisted his advances. Subsequently, he purportedly disposed of her body by casting it into the ocean from the Devil's Slide. The jury wasted little time deliberating and swiftly found McMonagall guilty, taking only 38 minutes to reach their verdict. He received a sentence of death by execution in the gas chamber. During his time on death row, McMonagall confessed to the murder of Dorothy Rose Woods, a woman from San Francisco. Additionally, he made claims of being responsible for a total of 11 murders, although no charges were brought against him for these additional crimes. However, in his final statement before his execution in 1948, McMonagall asserted that he had no involvement in Chamberlain's disappearance. 